here is Germany, and uh, here is France, and over here is England. Oh, I know all about England. That's where Queen Victoria lives. That's right, Victoria, Queen of England, a very gracious lady. Now you see, Della, ships come from these countries loaded with goods and people and cross over here. This is the Atlantic Ocean. And but what are them things? Tell you the truth, I don't know whether they're islands or fly specks. Fly specks. First time I ever knew they had flies on the Atlantic Ocean. Well, anyway, goods and people are landed here. This is New York City. Then they're put on canal boats and towed up the Hudson River here. They start out along the Erie Canal here. And tomorrow, when the season opens, you'll see boats going west, taking out goods and settlers, Germans, Irish, Scotch, and English, way out through the Indian country, maybe all the way to the Pacific coast. Men who'll start farms and build new cities. Then in time, other boats will come back, loaded with wheat and grain, and things they'll build in those towns, right along here, down to New York. Then they'll be put on bigger boats and sent over to Europe again. Sort of an endless chain it is, just a coming and a going, a coming and a going. And the most important link in that chain is the Erie Canal that runs right along, well, right outside your door here. Now, isn't that a pretty story? Well, I'd rather look at pictures in a book. Yes, they're nice too. Can you show me the bar on that map for me? <laughs> I'll let you show me that, Mr. Weaver. All right, come on. I never feel so good as when the canal opens. Nice meeting old friends. Yeah. What's that? You pull teeth with it. I wanted gambling from a dentist in Albany. No. I already got a job to extract the lady's motor. <laughs> you ain't a dentist, are you? Indirectly. When I used to sell notions up Black River Way, I always included tooth powder in my stock. Who's the woman? City lady from Durhamville. Elmer Otway's getting her drunk. It'll deaden the dread of anticipation and lessen the subsequent agony. You're a caution. Might call me a man of many parts. Yes, Elmer? Well, I'd like to have you look at her now and see if she's had enough. Indeed, I will. Thank you. He's already cost me a dollar and sixty cents. Our agreement was you were to get her in condition. Besides, I'm only charging you half rate. Yeah, but you don't lay claim to being more than half a dentist. Well, you get her a little number and I'll go to work on it. I'll be in the bar. Ivy, you sure you got a toothache? You ain't getting drunk just to get drunk, are you? The best. That five cent brand. Yes, sir. While the birds make music all the day, the young folks... That's a pretty tune. Haven't you heard it before? Been out a couple of years. All the rage in New York. Say, Sam, did you know that the government in Washington is aiming to build a railroad from the Atlantic to the Pacific? For what? Who wants railroads? Tell me, they got a train on the Roman Watertown goes 22 miles an hour. And do you think folks are going to risk their lives riding in it? Railroads. You'll never see the day that even compete with the Erie. The canal is the greatest thing this country's ever done. Ever will do. I'll drink to that, Samson. I'll join you there, Mr. Friendly. To the Erie. Fire and fall back. Everybody down. No bridge. We're coming to a town. You'll always know you never. Here for Bigfoot Sal. She aimed for heaven, did this poor old gal. Fifteen years on the Erie Canal. The missioner said she died in sin. But then he said it was too much gin. But there weren't no bar where she hadn't been. From all the legal buffalo. Oh, 
Gosh, Jotham, you can just feel spring in the air, can't you? Yeah. Look, there's a fight. Come on. <laughs> oh, ain't the canal grand. The season ain't even open yet, and already there's a fight. You call that a fight? being stopped. If I hit him again, I'll kill him. You ought to be ashamed, old men like you. Nobody can speak bad of my kin. What did he say? Oh, he said my brother was a conductor on a railroad train. It's an insult to me, mother. I never said it. My kin working on a railroad. Why, I helped dig the Erie Canal 25 years ago. So did my brother. It's old man Riley. Bet he was fighting about the railroads again. You think the railroads is here to stay, the way folks argue about them? There's Lucy Gurgit and her boater. Hi, Lucy. Hello, Molly. Hi, Jotham. Hi, Cole. Hi, Mr. Fisher. Did you have a good winter? Pretty good. Stayed with Miss Peterson, Little Paul. How is she? Jess Midland. She's got the rheumatism and another baby. Either one would be enough. Hey, Porter, keep out. I'm a pulling in there. What do you think I'm a doing? Pull up to his bow so I can get aboard him. Oh, goody, goody, look. There's going to be another fight. Mm -hmm. Mr. Friendly, there's going to be a fight. Oh, man, just sass, jump the floor. Oh, Fortune, you can't go. That two's half out and half in. Well, the half that's out won't go back in, and the half that's in won't come out till I get back. Yeah, but she's liable to sober up, and I'll have to get her drunk all over again. Tell you what I'll do. I'll go watch the fight and come back and tell you how it's going. Yeah, there's going to be a fight. Jotham Clore just got his hat. Yeah, Shut up! Shut up! You go back in the hotel now. Can't I see just the beginning of it? Fights ain't nice for little girls. But get me! Go on now. Go on. Go on. How to do? I'm Jotham Clore. Generally understood up and down this ditch, and when I want to make a landing, I make it. Irregardless. I'm Walt Lansing, and the same is considered about me up the Black River Canal. This is the Erie. He can't swim. Given me sass, and he can't even take care of himself in the water. If I'd done right, I'd let him drown. Weren't much. It didn't last long. Excuse me, sir, but who is that lady? Huh? That's Molly Larkins, the best cook on the Erie. She works for Jotham Claw. He is the bully of the whole canal. Goodbye. It was over in a jiffy. I'm afraid we had a slight misfortune during your absence. The Ivy said I took out the wrong tooth. The wrong tooth? She pointed to it herself. Well, I can't waste all day here. I got to go see the freight agent about my cargo for tomorrow. Well, you go ahead, and I'll just start from the beginning again. Fortune, that's awful, you pulling out the wrong tooth. It's not right. You should have seen the fight I had on Albany. I licked five men. It was astonishing. I was surprised myself that one person could do it. Go and get those wet clothes off before you catch cold. And hurry, because I want to go shopping. I got a special fine supper plan. I'll see you later. All right. Cargo wheels and wagon parts to Buffalo. Must be making up a heap of them covered wagons. They expect a lot of settlers to start west this summer. Them covered wagons is about the only way they can get their families across the plains. Second time I've hauled a boat full of them. Got a load for my boat, Mr. Fisher? Got a fine cargo of hogs to Albany. Well, Mr. Fisher, I'm getting sick of hauling hogs. What else is your boat fit for? Well, it never will be fit for anything else. If I keep hauling hogs, my cook says it's the worst smell she ever got into. And why'd you ever contract for it? Well, you talked me into it. Well, last year, I remember saying to you, says I, won't hogs smell? And you says, there's hogs and hogs. Well, I carried them in hot weather, and when it comes to smelling, there ain't hogs and hogs, there's just hogs. 
You ain't got any idea what it's like riding with a pit load of them in the end of June, going down to Hudson to cut us out a tow and put us at the end, and by jeepers the wind changed and they put us up front again. And I was a laughing stock. Well, folks wouldn't even let me come near them. You got a hog boat? No, I ain't got a hog boat. I spent all winter cleaning it up, and it smells decent. Now, well, you don't smell any hog about me. No, I don't. I'm as clean a smelling man as there is on the canal now. Why, everybody's noticed it. I might go smell your boat. Oh, honest, Mr. Fisher, it'd do you good. It smells just like new mown hay. I'll come over later. Well, thank you kindly, Mr. Fisher. Is Mr. Sampson Weaver here? He was. Reckon he's back at the hotel now. Thank you. you got a load for me, Mr. Fisher? Do they still have passenger boats on the Erie? Not as many as they used to. The play actors still travel by them, though. Show coming here next month. Junius Brutus Booth. Jeepers Creepers, I read about him. Had a good show here last month. Had a first false step for Trap for Revenge. Did you see that? No. Gosh, I hope I can see Junius Brutus Booth, though. Well, Ivy, that's the best job I ever did. Feels like I ain't got no teeth at all now. Oh, you'll be all right, Ivy. Just uh, don't eat anything for two or three days. And uh, you might rub a little of that gargling oil on it. Molly! Hello, Fortune. How are you? Fine, now that the canal's opening. Heard you were gambling all winter in Albany. Won an outfit from a dentist. Look, my first patient. Fortune. Hmm? Did you get it out? I don't feel like this side of my face is here anymore. Well, it's there. You can see it. Oh, she'll be all right in a few days, probably. Uh, one dollar? Uh, two dollars. Dollar tooth. Oh, but one tooth was a mistake. It was just as hard to take out as the other, Elmer. Oh, uh, I don't know. We'll let Molly decide. Well, if you get one dollar for taking out the right tooth, it seems to me you ought to give a dollar for taking out the wrong one. <laughs> well, now, there's a fair enough transaction. That makes you and me even, Stephen. Come on, Ivy. Now, wait a minute, Elmer. No, sir, Molly's word is law. Now, let's talk this over, Elmer. Now, wait a minute. Did you have to put on your Sunday clothes to go shopping? I don't aim to eat on the boat tonight. The night before the opening of the season? Some of the fellas want me to go out with them and fancy dandy around. There ain't nobody in this town can cook a better meal than I can. There's other things in life besides vittles. Are you insulting my cooking? No. You're a good cook, Molly. But you get notional about it. Besides, I'm Jotham Claw. You've got to treat me with more respect. Give me orders in front of them other men. Molly, what's the matter? I'm just popping open mad, that's all. Why? My voter. Here I fix a special nice supper tonight, and he says he ain't gonna eat all oh, the Oh, don't worry about that. Says I'm bossy. You might think I was his wife instead of his cook. Come on, come on inside and sit down. Eating in town the very night before the opening of the season. Well, it looks as though we didn't care anything about the canal. Jotham don't feel things the way we do, Molly. You were born on the canal. It's in your blood like it's in mine. It's awful important to you, ain't it, when the Grand Canal opens? It's the most exciting time of the whole year. Pa used to give me a hair ribbon on opening day. When I was little, I liked to die. You're going to marry Jotham, ain't you? That was my plan. Now I don't know. He's the best fighter on the canal. Yes, that's in his favor. But he can't tell good cooking from bad, and I hold that again him. You know how I love to cook. Oh, you stay here and cool off, Molly. I got a new driver boy chasing me around somewhere. If he comes in, pull him. I'll be right back. All right, Mr. Weaver. You're a fair-minded man, Elmer, and if you didn't pay me, you'd only worry about it later on. And I don't want you to have it on your conscience. Oh, I'll pay you. Thanks. I'll frame these bills the first money I ever earned in my new career. I'll keep them for luck. Huh. Oh, Elmer. If you ever want to make Ivy a nice present, I could put a pair of gold teeth in there rather cheap. It'd be mighty pretty. Mm -hmm. 
Fortune, buying any tickets for the Ohio Lottery? Grand prize, $15,000. $15,000? <laughs> Excuse me, ma'am. Is Mr. Sampson Weaver here? You the driver he's expecting? Yes, ma'am. He said for you to wait. Thank you, ma'am. River. Pleased to meet you. Pleased too, ma'am. No. How? I asked. Oh. You're the best cook up. That's right. Yes, ma'am. Been on the canal long, Miss Larkins? All my life. My wages are $12 a month, if you'd like to know. Gosh, I ain't got a boat. If I ever get one, I'll remember you. Thanks. I've got a job. Yes, ma'am, I know. How do you know? I asked. Maybe you know who I work for. Chotham Clore. How did you find that out? A man told me. You're the fellow that stopped the fight. Yes, ma'am. Don't you like fights? I can't say I relish them. Well, you'll have to if you want to stay on the canal. I don't aim to stay. I don't even know I like the canal. You don't know that you'll like the canal? No, ma'am. The canal? Yes, ma'am. Well, I guess that's going to be awful. It'll just about break the poor old canal's heart. Well, well. Finest thing the whole world has ever seen. And you don't know whether you're gonna like it. My, ain't that too bad now. I didn't mean that. If you don't like the canal, what are you gonna work on it for? So as I can go east and make some money till I get settled. I aim to get me a farm. I was born on one. Are you any good with horses? Yes, ma'am. Mostly, though, I admire cows. Cows? Yes, ma'am. Well, I couldn't stand a farm. I've always got to be on the up and go. I wouldn't exchange the canal for anything. You sure like it, don't you? I love it. I guess that's the way I feel about a farm. It must be fine to have land all your own. The canal's all our own. You ain't got a deed. My part's mine. I'd like to see anybody try to take it away from me. What about the railroads? What about them? Some say they'll put the canal out of business. Anyways, it ain't the whole of life. To me, it is the whole of life. Things happen on the canal. There's boats coming and there's boats going, passing you all the while. And like as not, there's a fight at every lock. And there's excitement all the time and speed. Why, once last year, I was in four different cities in only two days. Naturally, though, you wouldn't like it if you took such a frenzy for a farm. There's some things I like about it. Well, you'll like Samson Weaver. Hope you get the job. Thank you, ma'am. Maybe the canal will grow on you. Oh, Mr. Weaver. Oh. Here's your driver. Oh, oh. His name is Daniel Harrell. Harrell? You ain't keen to Henry Harrell, are you? Well, my pa's name was Henry Harrell. Well, by holy dang, of course. You're the spitting image of him. 
<clears throat> Your father had the Golden City. Yes, sir. His father was a canaller. His father made the record run on the Erie's, connected it to Buffalo in three days, 11 hours, and 37 minutes. Gang side better than four miles an hour, and his father done it. And with a father like that, and you don't know whether you're gonna like the canal. No, ma'am. Well, whatever became of your Paul? He died five years ago. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Well, son, you get the job. Thank you, Mr. Weaver. Guess I'll be running along. Well, goodbye, Miss Larkins. I hope I ain't seen the last of you, ma'am. Oh, see you along the big ditch. Our boat's called the Emma. I don't know the name of ours. The Sarsie Sal, and I hope you like her, lad. I'm beginning to think I will. <laughs> We start east tomorrow. Where are you and Clara hauling, Molly? We're going east being Little Falls Wednesday. So are we. We'll see you there. All right. We'll be there. Hey, Molly. Change my mind. What are you on the boat? All right, Jotham. You know, outside of being bossy, I like you. I don't want to punish you too much. You got a load for a little falls, ain't you? I give it up. Won't pay to go east this trip. Gonna get me a cargo for Rochester. Going west? Yes. Jotham. Yep. What did you think of a man who didn't relish a fight? You can't blame a man much for not relishing a fight with me. Well, not with you, with anybody. You mean not relishing a fight? As a fight? Yeah. I never heard of anybody like that. Did you? No. What'd you ask for, then? Oh, I was just thinking about it, that's all. All right, you can pick that up at Schindler's early in the morning. Yeah, how you been hibernating, Saul? <laughs> Fine. Mr. Fisher, I heard there's a full cargo of grain for Rochester. I'm settling that now with Mr. Tinker. I've got that load. You wouldn't mind letting me handle that cargo, Saul? Well, but it's already fixed. You can easy get another load. The papers is already made out. A little extra handwriting ain't gonna send you into a decline. I'll be back in 20 minutes to sign for it. Give five dollars of my own money to see somebody whip that fella. We'll get along fine, Daniel. Yes, sir. I ain't got no cook, but I can boil as good an egg as you can find along the hill. And steak is easy to find. Well, anything else for us to settle? Oh, the wages. Regular wages. Start you right at the top. Twelve dollars a month. Thank you, Mr. Weaver. Let's go down to the blacksmith. I got my horses to be in shoes. Oh, it's Samson. Yes. Would you uh, like to purchase a ticket for the Ohio? I aim to buy one, yes. There you are. One dollar. I made two dollars and spent it on these tickets, but upon reflection, I decided it wasn't the lucky thing to do. I should retain one of the bills as a keepsake. There you are. Of course, this is not the same bill. No. But it'll answer the purpose. Thank you, Samson. Not at all, Fortune. to see you again, ma'am, because I can't remember whether I told you I was pleased to meet you. You told me. Well, I'll see you a day after tomorrow in Little Falls. No, you won't. We're going to Rochester. Oh. Well, then it's goodbye, ma'am. Oh, we might meet again. Anything can happen on the canal. I hope it does. Well, goodbye, ma'am. Goodbye. Who's that fellow? Samson Weaver's new driver boy. It might not be so terrible at that for a fellow not to relish a fight. What are you talking about? Nothing, I was just thinking. You can do more public thinking than anyone I ever see.
All jammed up at the lock. It's going to have a little delay. Don't seem no time at all since the season started. Just think, from Rome to Rochester, then to Albany, and now almost back to Utica again. Then you sure move on the canal. I wonder where Samson Weaver's boat is at. Why? I was just wondering. We ought to know who won the Ohio tonight in Utica. What's that contraption? It's a foot drill. I won it from that same dentist in Albany the day before I came to work for you. Yes, and that fellow in Hooker must said that when you pulled his tooth, you dang near broke his jaw. Oh, his face was very brittle. Maybe I can get some work to do on this packet boat ahead. My jeepers, look. You see that tall fella? You know who that is? Oh, sure. My jeepers, it's Junius Brutus Booth, the play actor. Jonathan took me to see him in Rochester. It was a show where he done a takeoff on a king who was all hunchback. Richard III. That's it. I saw him play it in Philadelphia. I remember one of his sayings. Yes? Yeah? A horse! A horse! My kingdom for a horse! <laughs> you must have been to the theater, young man. I was. That's a good show you got. I didn't understand it, but it was fine. Really shouldn't be so very difficult to understand. It was written by a great poet. Shakespeare. Uh, Mr. Booth. I've been an admirer of yours for years. Thank you, sir. I wonder if you'd do me an unusual honor. If I can, I should be very happy to. Uh, would you let me take out one of your teeth? <laughs> that is provided, of course, they should come out. You see, I'm sort of a dentist. <laughs> My teeth are quite sound. Thank you. Father, may I go on the canal boat and steer it? Sure. Come on, son. Well, just for a few moments, my boy. Be very careful. You'll be all right. It's Mr. Booth's young son. How do you do, ma'am? Pleased to meet you. And he wants to steer the boat. Sure. Well, lad, are you going to be a great actor, too, when you grow up? Yes, sir. Is there anything in that paper about my father? No, this paper comes from a long ways off. Springfield, Illinois. A fella going east on a packet boat gave it to me this morning. He comes from there. You want it? Yes, sir. I like to read about politics in the newspaper. Well, there's a piece about politics in there. Man out west to want any more slave states. There's his picture. Let's see, what's his name again? Abraham Lincoln. Lincoln? Abraham Lincoln? I heard him deliver a speech in Washington a couple of years ago. He was a congressman then, a great man. I never heard of him. Well, you will, because unless I miss my guess, Mr. Lincoln is destined to be very famous. I bet he'll hear me when I grow up. I'm going to be famous, too. What's your name, son? John Wilkes Booth. Oh, Here's the Sarcy Sal, Samson Weaver's boat. Let's tie off here. All right, Fortune. Tie her off there. This is nobody aboard, or else they're all asleep. She's fast here. Whoa, whoa! What's the matter with you? We're going to pull the whole canal over here. You going visiting around the boats? No, sir. I'm tired. I'm going to bed. Well, I think I'll go over to the Etna house and get me a couple of snorters. Take care of yourself, Jonathan. Don't get into any fights and don't drink too much. There ain't that much. Well, I'll be back for breakfast before I go to bed. Good night. See you in the morning.
Are you up yet? I've been up half an hour. You want only one shoe on the black, don't you? I'll come up and take a look at it. Clean out the back angle and leave the bars be. You don't want a bar strength? Of course not. Well, Mr. Butterfield always sends me his best trotters and I trim the bars for him. Yeah, but this ain't a trotter. When a horse is hauling a boat or a plow, you gotta let the heel of the hoof spread. Well, I don't know. I do. Gosh, I was born and bred with horses. I've got to admit you've got a nice pair here. They'd be mighty fine on a farm. <laughs> you bet they would. up the Etney house. Put away more liquor last night than any man in the history of the whole canal. Is he drunk? Well, yes and no, but you ought to be proud of him. He broke the record. Oh, Miss Larkin. Hello there. Well, goodness grief, what are you doing here? Oh, this is our boat. This is your boat? Yes, ma'am. That we're tied up to? Yes, ma'am. Who'd have thought? You must have been asleep when we pulled in last night. Yes, ma'am. I go to bed early. It's on account of you being a farmer, I suppose. I suppose so. Well, if you're going to live like a farmer, why do you keep working on the canal? Or to save money again the day when I can buy a farm. You mean after being a month on the Erie, you're still thinking about buying a farm? Yes, ma'am. By jeepers, that makes me mad. Well, it ain't my resolve to make you unhappy, ma'am. Why, I often think about you, where you are and what you're doing, and this morning when I seen your boat there, I... Well, it give me a start, ma'am. I was that glad I was going to see you again. Here's the black. You can have the other one in ten minutes. Oh, thanks. Did you get a cook yet? No, ma'am. Mr. Weaver and me takes turns. Can you cook? I've been frying a lot of steaks. Would you like me to fix some breakfast for you? No, I ate already. What'd you have? Steak. I got up early because Mr. Butterfield says he could see me in Rome at nine o'clock. He may give me a job on his farm at the five combines. I just can't understand why you don't like the canal. I like the people on it. Of course, it's nice now with spring coming on. Oh, it was pretty yesterday morning coming up from Little Falls. I saw the birds going north. Do you like flowers? I like them fine, ma'am. There certainly is a mess of violets and patty cutters this side of Rome. I had the urge to get off and get some. You ought to pick some of them elderberry blossoms and make some wine. Wine? For a canaler? I guess you're right, ma'am. Gosh, take Mr. Weaver. He can certainly drink hard liquor. He can drink more than any two men on the canal. Except one. You never met my boater. No. He can drink more than any two men on the canal, plus Mr. Weaver. Low bridge, everybody down. Low bridge, we're coming to a town. You always know your neighbor. You always know your pal. If you've ever navigated on the Erie Canal. Good morning, Mr. Clower. This is Mr. Harrow, Jotham. Oh, ain't you gonna say how do you... You got about the fog. Only the first prize was won by a female in Buffalo. 
I could have said a buffalo female. That would have been the same thing. But I couldn't have said a female buffalo because that would have been something different. You're inclined to be a little drunk, ain't you? Just a slight inclination, I should... Elmer Otway says you busted all the records for drinking. I got a dozen witnesses. They couldn't believe their eyes. They were dumbfounded. He said you had drunk more than anybody ever in the history of the canal. That was only up to three o'clock. But 4.30, there was all willing to include the Great Lakes. Who's that fella? I just introduced you to him. What's his name? Mr. Harrow. I don't like him. Oh, now, you don't know Mr. Harrow. You got to be polite. Is he Canella? He works on Samson Weaver's boat. Go on now, because you got to get some sleep. Oh, so that's why you made me tie up here last night. You said... That's Samson Weaver's book. Don't pay no notice to him. Didn't you say that? No. Go on now, Jotham, and go and get your last drink. I hate a liar. The record's sort of gone to his head. Why'd you keep her from cooking my breakfast? I ain't stopped her. Get on that boat. Don't you talk to me like that. Maybe the time has come for me to give you a good licking. That time ain't never gonna come, Clore, and don't you forget it. I'm sick and tired of humoring you. Now you get on that boat and get your breakfast. Danged if I like that. Did you know it was our boat last night? That ain't the point. When a lady says a thing, a gentleman's got to believe her. It was he's going out of his way to be so mean. It ain't that I blame him when he gets mad, because I get mad too. Are you mad now? By jeepers, I'm getting to be. Well, if you get mad enough, why don't you transfer to Mr. Weaver's boat? He needs a cook. Oh, I could get a job easy enough. Well, it's just that his boat's so handy. I ain't worked up enough yet. Maybe Clore was just showing off in front of you. Well, I suppose I have to make his breakfast. See you in the fog lift. Well, I hope so, but maybe I won't. Why? I may hire out to Mr. Butterfield. Today? If he gives me the job. Oh. I just can't understand it. A big, strong fella like you, hankering for a farm. Here. Here. You can't sleep here. Go in your own cabin. I want my breakfast. You'll get your breakfast. I want eggs. You'll get eggs. Oh. So you think you can tell me what I'm going to eat, do you? Well, I won't eat eggs. What do you want? I want... eggs. But I want them different. Sick of your eggs. Boiled eggs and fried eggs. I want some boiled fried eggs. That's what I want. Now listen, Tor, you're drunk now. Why don't you go in and get some sleep so we can get out of here this afternoon? I ain't got a taste for this town anymore. Where you are, Mr. Harrell? Thanks. Morning, Dan. Morning, Miss Gurgis. Did you know Molly get in last night? Yes, ma'am. She's tied up Morning, to our boat. Hey, look out. Now, wait a minute. Molly, be careful. Hey, don't throw those things. Hey! It's like fun, you will. What's the matter, Molly? It's this here Clore. He's gone and got me pretty mad. I've stood just about enough of him. He ain't going to give me no lacing, and I ain't wiping no egg off of his face. What's the egg doing there? I put it there. Ought to throw the whole dozen at him. Excuse me for making your witness. If I was you, I'd up and leave him. That's just what I'm going to do. I ain't never been ashamed of myself, and I ain't going to be ashamed of anybody I work for. Get your things and come on to room with us. I'll see you later in the hotel. Well, now that you've quit Clore, why don't you sign up on our boat? You're gone on a farm. 
Will the cooking be good on a farm? I guess not. You like chicken pie. Yes, ma'am, I do. Well, I ain't boastful, Mr. Harrow, but I don't know where you could get a better chicken pie maker than I am. And griddle cakes on mornings like this? I do like griddle cakes. Then why don't you stay on with Mr. Weaver a while longer? I'd like to eat your cooking, ma'am, but I don't think the canal's ever going to amount to anything. What? No, ma'am, I don't. Not with the railroads coming in like they are. You're for the railroads, too? Oh, wait a minute, ma'am. Don't get your dander up again. You're for the railroads. No, ma'am, I ain't, but they're building railroads all over now. The people and goods from Europe can go out west quicker on the railroads than they can on the canal. That's the way they're building up the country. Now, don't get your dander up. Well, I ain't. I'll never get anywhere on the canal. Now, I know a lot about a farm. Maybe if you had some good canal cooking, you'd feel different. No, ma'am, I wouldn't. Well, there's no need of me going on Mr. Weaver's boat, then. He'll get another driver. I don't know whether I'd like him or not. Well, I gotta get my things. We'll divide what she makes, even Stephen. <laughs> Scotland, that's a fine present, Mr. Weaver. You're half owner now. Gosh, I don't know what to say. Well, the first thing to say is that you'll never haul hogs. <laughs> <laughs> Think it over. At the end of the year, if you still want a farm, you can buy yourself one then. Excuse me. Miss Larkins, will you marry me? What? It's about getting married. You like me, don't you? Yes, ma'am, I've got to say I do. Well, I liked you the first time I seen you. Mr. Weaver's given me a half interest in the boat. Oh, then, now you're going to stay on the canal. I would if I knew at the end of it I could buy us a farm you'd like. Well, what if you find out you like the Erie more than a farm? Then I'll stay. I'll come and cook for you. You don't want to get married now? Not till we're sure of ourselves. Let's make a promise. I'll promise never to talk about the canal, and you promise never to talk about a farm. We'll see how it works out. I promise. I promise, too. Then I'll get my things, Mr. Harrow. I guess I can call you Dan now, Mr. Harrow. Yes, ma'am, Molly. Can I help you pack? What's the matter with you? He had a nervous shock. Sam Weaver won $5,000 in the Ohio. Well, why should that give you a shock? The winning ticket was mine. Then how did Sam get it? I bought the ticket and then sold it to Sam in a moment of financial misjudgment. Oh, not that I begrudge him. But when fate does a thing like that to you, one wonders what else will happen. Got all your things? Yeah, Claire never even moved. He's going to be mad, I suppose. You ain't afraid, are you, Dad? No. 
We'll give Fortune Friendly a job. He can drive. We can start west in an hour. I'm already loaded. Oh, wait a minute, Dan. Put it forward on the bowing. Why? I want to keep my eyes open for elderberry blossoms. Four o'clock. Yes, sir. Molly and Dan ought to be just sailing past the Riscany now. Oh, floor is awake. The minute he hears Molly skipped, he'll want to fight mm. the first fellow he sees. I just happen to think I've got to see Jaime. Sit down. Might be a good idea if Clover did get in a fight. Save trouble for Molly and Dan. If he wants to know where Molly went, send him over to the agent. Uh, I'll go with him, Mr. Weaver. You'll stay right here, <coughs> Saul. Ain't none of you got no gristle on your belly where Clara's concerned. Oh, hello, Sheriff. Hello, Samson. Your brother's a boat builder, ain't he? And a good one. I'm buying a new boat. Say, Sheriff, we might talk about that. Will you be here in ten minutes? I'll wait for you. I'll be right back. Have you seen Molly? Tell him, Elmer. Where is she? Oh, no, the, the agent knows. Agent knows what? Now, uh, what did you ask again, Jonathan? I asked where Molly was. No, well, that's it. The agent knows what. What? Well, that's what you asked, ain't it? What? What's all the hemming and hoeing about? I want to know where my cook is at. Molly's quit you, if that's what you're asking. What? That's it, what? Quit me? That's right. Where is she? She got another job. Only the agent knows whether she went east or west. And he allows us how he ain't gonna tell you. Oh, he ain't, Eddie. Yes, sir. He said you'd tell him where she went or he'd wipe up the place with you. Oh, he did, eh? Hey, Fred. Clore's coming here to wipe up the place. Harry, send Joe in here. I wouldn't want to see no trouble, but by jeepers, of course, starts to fight, the sheriff ought to put him in the lockup. Well, if he wants fight, he'll get it. Well, I just thought maybe I ought to tell you. Uh, Joe, Clore's coming here. Hello, Jotham. Yes, sir, Sheriff. I figure on a 96-foot boat. Wow. About 150 tons. Yes. Cabin. That a fight? It wouldn't surprise me. Mighty nice, just seeing you sitting there. Hello, Molly. Hello, Mr. Vernoy. Flora got a new boat? Working for Mr. Harrow now. Where's Jotham? As far as I know, he's at peace with the world in Utica. Put the law on him, Sheriff. I'll get that driver of you and Mr. Weaver. But you'll spend 90 days in the lockup first. I think it was wrong to get in the fight, Gotham. Oh, look. Jeepers creepers. Oh, look at Father. Here's another boat. Hello. They must be the people Samson Weaver was telling us. Where are they going? Missouri first. They'll spend the winter there. In the spring, they'll meet up with a lot more wagons from all parts of the country. Then they'll start out across the prairies, all the way out to California. What for? Some of them after gold, I guess. Others just to make new homes. It's exciting just to think of it, ain't it? They'll have to fight Indians and wild animals. It'll be dangerous. They'll have to work hard, and there'll be hardships for them to face. Man will suffer a mighty heap to get land he can call his own. Angus! Aye? A halfpenny for your thoughts. Oh, there wasn't much more than that. I was thinking of Bonnie Scotland. Man, we've come a long way from home, Harry. 
further we get from the old home, the nearer we get to the new. Now, there'll always be Scotland for you to go back to, and for me, there'll always be Yorkshire. But first is the new home to me, and it's a great country we're going to, to make it in. So don't be downhearted, Angus. If we're rich, we can go back if we still have the heart for it. And you'll take the high road. And I'll take the low road. And I'll be in Scotland for ye. And me and my true love will never meet again. Maybe I better take a look at that kitten's teeth. You keep away from her teeth. She's all right. And look at the way she's growing. Can you realize it's three months since I come with Dan? I ain't never been so happy. I wonder if Jotham Clore got out of jail yet. Do you think there'll be trouble when him and Dan meet? Well, it's just as well maybe that they didn't meet. It's a funny thing about Dan. He don't like to fight. Of course, some women admire that. I don't. I don't even mind him not cussing. Oh, Fortune, I am in love with him. That's why you're putting up all those preserves for the Whitesboro Fair, eh? Well, Lucy said that only farm people sent their cooking. So I thought if I could win a prize with my preserves, it'd prove to Dan that canal folk can do things, too. Oh, the grand passion, as the French call it, is a strange thing. Weren't you ever in love, Fortune? When I was young, she was a charming lady. She was a snake charmer with a carnival. <laughs> we were awfully fond of each other. In fact, she told me she loved me more than she did her snakes. But I sort of resented being the rival to reptiles and just let the matter drop. <laughs> hey, Molly, I'll get to the fair a day before you do. I better take your preserves on our boat in time. I take that very kindly, Lucy. That's a good idea. I'll get them ready for you right now. I'd like to see Dan and her leave town as quick as they can. Clore? He got out of jail three days ago. He's coming west. You smell anything? We're coming into Rome. I never smelled Rome before. When'd you get out of jail, Jotham? Wednesday. What you hauling? Got a cargo of rifles and bullets going out west to Fort Laramie. I guess the Indians are on the warpath again. Here you put up quite a fight yourself in Utica. Say, did I? It was astonishing. It took seven men to put me in jail. Where are you hauling? Syracuse. Then I'm coming back to the Arnotti Fair. Why, Jeepers, there's something smelling around here. Hey, Otway! You smelling up there? Well, well, it ain't what you'd call a smelly smell. Pull over to shore. I'm a-going by you. Oh, please, Mr. Clark! You heard me, didn't you? Oh. And don't give me none of your lip. You don't need a boat for them hogs. You could float them in a Syracuse on their own smell. Oh. Hi, Mr. Roberts. Hi, Mr. Pajaro's boat on your way east. They were loading yesterday in Oneida. Short hauling way. Don't forget now, if you hear if anybody wants some gold teeth, tell them about me. I'll tell them. <laughs> Here you are, Lucy. Land sakes, you must have fixed about 15 kinds. Say, if they're only half the kind you make, the prize is already yours. Oh, shucks, you're just saying that. Are we loaded yet? Just about. Where you been? Mr. Butterfield's. On business. At the boat? Well, 
In a way. We ought to get out of here in about a half hour. I have the urge to ride the horses with Fortune. Well, I reckon Fortune won't object to that. I don't like the idea of hauling that lumber for them railroads. Pay as well. I hate doing anything for them. The canal ain't going to be whipped, is it, Fortune? It's a funny age. Not like when I was young. Everybody's crazy for speed today. Things faster and get there quicker. The railroads will give them more speed, all right, but they'll make the people forget how fine the world could go at four miles an hour. <laughs> the railroads will never lick the canal. I just ain't going to think about it. We'd soon be to those locks where Dan always takes you walking. If I was you, I'd only think of that. You know, Fortune, I think Dan's getting to like the canal. The nicest sight I ever see is the canal in the early morning with the mist rising. Gosh, I never notice how pretty the canal is when you're on the boat. Why? Because you're so dang sweet looking yourself. <laughs> you are. Gosh, Molly, I ain't never been so happy. I told that to Fortune myself. Just today. I was forgetting I got news. What? Come on, sit down. I added up my books this morning. We made a lot more than I figured we would. Oh, Dan. Maybe we could get married now. All right. And you can buy the other half of the boat, can't you? Because you'll never want to leave the canal now. Oh. I thought... I'm sorry I broke my promise, Dan. It's nothing. Do you want to talk some more about getting married? Maybe it'd be better if we didn't now, huh? All right. Dan, you'll get your hands all dirty. This is soil. It's dirt. Yeah, but soil ain't dirty. It's clean and sweet smelling. My pa used to say if it wasn't for the soil, there wouldn't be any world. It gives us life. Grows things for us to live by. Grows grass for the cattle to graze on so we can have meat to eat. Trees and flowers that are pretty to look at. I reckon, Molly, nobody'd be alive if it wasn't for soil. Yes, but you need water to live by, too. You get water from soil, dig a well. You ain't setting to talk about a farm, are you? No. There was a funny look on your face just now when you were asking about getting married. Now don't get your dander if up. If I thought... We got to get back. You know, Molly, if we get unloaded by tomorrow, we'll get to the fair by Thursday. out some of my own teeth. Maybe you'll get some cases at the fair. Molly, that gives me an idea. If my cooking should win a prize, I'd be the happiest girl in the world. Just for Dan's sake. Gosh, Molly, the fair is wonderful. What, Dan, book? Yeah, and a present for you. So you can see how pretty you look. It's lovely. But it's so big. Oh, it sort of took my fancy at the store. Put your new dress on. All right. We want to get to the grounds right away. Say, Molly, it's lively there as all get out. Jeepers, creepers, what a cake. That's a champagne. You bet some like it. I just made the frosting thicker. 
I ain't seen anything as nice as that since my ma was alive. Molly ain't got the reputation for being the best cook on the canal for nothing. Oh, it's just a crazy old cake. We're going to take it to the fair with it. You know, Dan, you bought such a big oven, I had to use it for something. Fortune, what are you doing? Guess and I've been using. <coughs> there. You're about as pretty as anything I ever see. My, my. I'm going to be so dang proud of you at the fair. You like fairs, don't you, Dan? Oh, country folk think there's nothing so fine as a fair. Oh, the canal has its celebrations, too. They say there was nothing ever so fine as the one when the Erie opened. You were there, Fortune. Tell us about it. Oh, I've told you. I want Dan to hear. Well, all right. It was in 1825. There was cannons strung out within earshot of each other all along the canal. The minute it was opened and the water came in from Lake Erie first, muddy and slow like a little creek, the guns went off one after another all the way to New York. They had the news there 80 minutes later. Then the guns started firing all the way back again. In about an hour, we knew that New York knew all about it. When the canal was filled, the first boat to move on her was Governor Clinton's. She was painted all red and white and drawn by four matched grays. But what everybody was looking at was a beautiful keg standing in the middle of her deck. Had the American Eagle painted on it and a star-spangled banner wrapped over it. It was a barrel of water from Lake Erie to be emptied in New York Bay. It was quite a sight to see. Wasn't that wonderful, Dan? I bet it was. Come on, I can't wait to get back to the fair. I'll wrap up the cake. Oh, sure, but let's hurry. Molly, you've never seen such a fair for livestock. There's every kind of breed cattle. First Holsteins I've ever seen in New York State. It'll make history. And they say the governor himself's going to be there, and that rich Mr. Vanderbilt from New York's going to make a speech. You mean that railroad fella? Well, they call him Commodore Vanderbilt. He owns a fleet of ferry boats in the Hudson. I'll be up on deck. There's been some fine big stallions passing by here. Come on up, Molly. Jeepers, creepers, there's about a million Indians coming. Let's go. Get to the next door. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. I'm on up with the ex-cuts. This is not the talk. I'm going to go. 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 I'm New treaty, come. You're going to Washington to make a new treaty with the government. Make big talk with great white father. Live now in peace. Twenty winters with white brother. Live in peace more. New treaty. Did he say new treaty? New treaty. Oh, I thought he said he wanted some new teeth. That's my profession. Me fix some bad teeth. Now, if any of your boys should want me to fix them. Mm, no, no. Just my luck. If I'd have got here sooner, I might have got some business. It's the best cologne you can buy, my boy, straight from Paris. Every bottle of genuine French cologne. There it is right on the label. Made in France. Huh. Well, what this one? That's his flowers of Cupid. It's 40 cents. Hmm. Yeah, I can't make up my mind what I like best. Flowers of Cupid or love station? 
I'm going to take love's fashion. Ah, oh, love's fashion, the gentleman's tricks. Love's fashion at 35 cents. Is there anyone else wants one? Step right up and need to avail yourself not to leave late time. Get this fragrance over of France. Hush in the flowers of famous France. Buy for yourself a bottle for your wife, your sweetheart, or your mother. This famous French perfume. This famous genuine French cologne. Get right up. Get this fragrance over of France. Hush in the flowers of famous France. Hello, Lucy. Famous French famous Say, what have you got on you? Love's fashion. What's that? Well, it's the finest colony water made in France, and I just paid 35 cents for it. Well, I'd rather smell the hogs, and they ain't no geraniums. Your fortune told 50 cents today. She tells you all about yourself. Job in court getting his fortune told. You got your hair over here, too. Ooh. Ah, within one, I see one, one day, one week, one year, you will be in a terrible fight. You don't have to be a glass looker to tell me that. I'm Jotham Clore. Ah, I see a terrific struggle. You exchange blows. Your body is pitted against another body. There is blood. Who's going to win? The crystal does not say who will. You mean you can't see me winning in there? I can't see anything. You're a liar. Ah, my dear sir. The crystal does not show everything for 50 cents. It shows me winning in there. You look again and see it. I can't look see... Look good. Ah! Am I winning? Yes, yes. You all lied faker. You're trying to lie to me. No, I was... I, How I... much am I going to pay you? Can you see that in there? Ah, I see here the sum of 50 cents. That proves you're a liar, because I ain't going to give you nothing. So uh, hold, see, so. me, can't see. Okay, Jotham, they got one of those new railroad cars down here a piece. I ain't interested. Only one thing on my mind, and that's your partner, Daniel Harrow. I aim to meet him around here sometime today. Yeah, but this here car was put there just to insult the canal. Who's insulting the canal? Them railroad people. That's why the car is there. So they'd have the lap on it. Where is it? Come on. Come on. I do hope we get the cake in before the contest closes. I'm the matter to fight a dog. What's the matter? They wouldn't take your preserves. Good grief, are they as bad as that? It's all on account of you ate a resident of Oneida County. When the fellow told me that, I just started a blister. I says, what kind of way is this to run a contest, you wart? This ain't a fair, it's an unfair. It ain't got nothing to do with your cooking. Why, there was never anybody could cook like you, Molly. Well, I'd feel terrible if it was because my cooking was bad. No. I went to see the man in charge of everything. I told him the same thing. I said, do you realize canals have been supporting this fair since before you was calved? It made no impression. I could have slapped his face. Oh, Mr. Harrell. Oh, hello, Mr. Butterfield. Could I see you a moment? Oh, excuse me, please. Molly, there's something more important than pickles. Floor's at the fair, and he's looking for a fight. Dan ain't afraid of him. If he wants trouble, Dan will give him plenty. I'll bet my boater will be glad that he's around. I happen to see you here, and I thought I might as well tell you myself. Well, thank you kindly, Mr. Butterfield. I sure appreciate it. I'll get out as quick as I can now. Yes, sir, I will. I'll see you in Utica, then. Yes, sir. There ain't a cowardly bone in Dan's whole body. Molly, would you mind if we went back to the boat, because I'd like to pull out for Utica just what? as soon as... Well, it's kind of important that I be back there in the morning. But we just got here today. Well, you see, I can get a full load out of Utica for Buffalo. You mean you want to leave the fair now? Well, if you don't mind. Did Mr. Butterfield tell you about Clore being here? He happened to mention it. All right. We'll go back to the boat. I'll take the basket. See you after supper, Lucy. Yes. That's one of the things that's going to put the canal out of business, huh? Yeah, they're going to have some kind of a special doings with it this afternoon. Get me some stones. Get some stones for Mr. Shore. Here you are, Mr. Shore. What happened after that? Hey, the Try this one, Gotham. Come on, boys, all together. Ah! Now, if they want to put her on exhibition, there's something for people to look at. <laughs> I just seen Dan O'Hara. Where? Him and Molly was heading for their boat. Wait a minute, Jotham. There's a railroad locomotive down yonder. We ought to do something about that, too. I got some real work to do now. But, Jotham! I don't 
see why you won't talk, Molly. Are you scared of Chlor? We'll put that in your head. A while ago, you was all perked up and crazy to go to the fair. Then all of a sudden, you want to get out of here and go back to Utica. Well, I might get a load in Utica. Did you know Chlor was here? I was told this morning. Why didn't you tell me? I didn't want to worry you none. Don't you think it would worry me a lot more to know my voter was a coward? How am I a coward? You're running away. Well, I... I gotta be in Utica tomorrow. To get away from Chlor? No, it's... Something else. What? That's something we said we wouldn't talk about. About a farm? Now listen, Molly, we've been mighty happy all summer. Don't let's spoil it now. Dan, did you go and buy a farm? Yes, I did. I offered Mr. Butterfield a price last week and he said he'd think about it. Today he said he'd take it. That's why I want to go back to Utica to see his agent. I said that about a load on account of Lucy being there. Then all the time you was on the canal, all the time the boaters was being neighborly and friendly, the only thing in your mind was you was buying a farm. I said from the beginning I didn't think I could stay on the canal. You never gave the canal a chance. You never bothered to notice how beautiful it is. You never noticed you've been happier here than you ever been in your life. That's because I've been in love with you. No, it ain't. It's because you can't play fair. This proves it. All them things you've been buying for the boat. Things that was too big for the boat. That looking glass. That kitchen oven. You knew all the time you was buying them for a dirty old farm. Even this dress. I'll bet you bought this to go to church in. Well, I thought maybe you'd get married in it. I'll never marry you now. I just think you're acting crazy. Molly, you ought to know there ain't anything in the world I wouldn't do for you except this, and it's just because I can't do it. Will you come and let me show you the farm? Me at a farm? Do you think I'm a traitor? Even Clore wouldn't ask me to do that. I thought he was mean, but he's nothing as compared to you. You're just saying that because you're mad. He never lied to me. I never lied to you. In your heart you did. You were saying one thing and all the time thinking another. At least Clore was honest. Maybe you never should have left him. Maybe I shouldn't. Well, if that's the way you feel, there's nothing going to stop you from going back to him. My jeepers, I can get my dander up, too. What are you going to do? Well, I got something more important to show you I ain't so mean. From now on, my half of the boat is yours. I won't take it. Where's Daniel Harrow's boat? Well, quite a piece down there. Over the bridge. And the boat was only mine if I stayed on the canal. Well, I'm going, so now it's yours. Whether you marry me or not, I don't think you'll be hauling many seasons more. What do you mean? You think people are going to travel four miles an hour when they can go 20? Times have changed, but you're so blinded by the canal you can't see it. Things ain't like they was 25 years ago, and another 25 years they won't be like they are now. That's progress, and that's what'll lick the Erie. Nothing can lick the Erie. I may miss you, but year after year I'll see the Erie growing even more wonderful. Hauling things east and hauling things west. And I'll be on my boat seeing it all happen. That's more than you'll be. You're so sure of everything. You're sure of one thing. I'll be on my farm growing things for the trains to haul. Soil won't change. That's as it was and always will be. As life comes from the soil, and life will always be the same. Jeepers, it's the most I ever talked in my life. You don't deserve to be on the Erie. If you ever want me, I'll be waiting for you at the place where I asked you to marry me. That's the farm I bought, Molly. The farm you wouldn't even come to see. That's the train. I gotta hurry. Running away. That's what you are. Just like a coward. That's all I could expect from a man that didn't like the Erie. It is the most wonderful thing in the world. Why couldn't you see that? Is that Daniel Harrell that just left here? Yes, yeah, but you can't catch him. He got on that train. I'll bet he did that just to insult the canal. Running away from a fight, eh? Funny fella you'd pick for a boater, Molly. You ain't much like your pa. You'd never let a coward work for him. Say, 
boss. What would you like me be tonight by supper? What have you got? Steak. Guess I'll have to like steak. They smell good, Molly. I don't seem to take any comfort in cooking anymore. I guess maybe it's a good thing the season is over tomorrow. The mouth's closing. You're tired. Of course, Dan leaving, that put a lot of work on your shoulder. Well, I'm used to work. It ain't that. It's the fact that I could ever be in love with a coward. After all, Molly, you don't really know that Dan is a coward. He ran away, didn't he? He went away. He ran away. That's what I can't forgive him. Maybe in time I could have got used to his wanting a farm. But being a coward, it's just again my nature. And anyway, I ain't unhappy over him. No. 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 Like you said, I'm just tuckered out. That's all. That's it. When you get to Rome tomorrow, you can take a good rest. What are you going to do, Fortune? For me? I got some business to attend to. I'll have to take a little trip, I guess. Whoa! Whoa. Hello, Fortune. How are you, Dan? Doing your fall plowing? Yeah. <laughs> I seen the buggy coming along and... I thought maybe it was somebody else. Yeah. Molly? <laughs> She's in Rome. I had some business up the road a piece and thought I'd see you. How is she? Oh, and might say in one way she is and another way she ain't. Sort of a yes and no proposition. She ain't sick. Worried. About what? Oh, Molly's a proud little thing and it kind of hurts her to see people sneering, I guess. Who's sneering at her? Canal folk. Why? Oh, they'll forget about it in time. People don't remember. Forget what? Oh, I shouldn't have spoken about it in the first place. What are you driving at? Well, you see, they're all sort of sticking their noses up at Molly. Some of them won't even speak to her at all. I heard Saul Tinker myself insult the girl right to her face. Insult Molly? Yes. About what? Canalers haven't any use for anyone that ever worked for a coward. They think I run away. And Molly has to bear the brunt of it. You see, Molly's pa was a fighter, and so was Clore. Then after what happened with you, why, they say that Molly ain't good enough anymore to work for a real man. I mean, a man on the canal is good enough for Molly, that's what. That's what I think. But it's hard for a girl to lose the respect of her friends, even though they ain't no cause for it. About the only one that pays any notice to her at all is Clore. Clore? Yes. Yeah. He's always got a big smile for her. But maybe he's only gloating. You never can tell. And she's being insulted just because I didn't fight him. Now, how did I ever get on this subject? I'm just an old fuss budget, I guess. I never should have mentioned it. It's Clor in Rome? Yes. He stops at Molly's boat real often. Well, I must get on. I'm going to be in Rome myself tomorrow. No, are you, Dan? Yeah. Buying Mr. Weaver's horses. Well, I'll see you. Yeah. So long. Get up. the winter working on the railroad. What's the world coming to? Seems like the poor old canal's getting licked every way these days. My jeepers, I'm going to tell them fellows off. Hello, Molly. Hello, Jotham. Where are you staying this winter? Here in Rome. 
Who are you going with next season? I ain't made up my mind yet. I'd like mighty fine to have you come back on my boat. I'll think about it. Then I'll stay in Rome, too. I'm going down to the freight agent's office now. I was thinking maybe you'd like to invite me to supper tonight. I don't get much comfort out of cooking anymore. That's because you ain't got a good eater around. I've been drinking more than I used to, so I eat more. Do your hard good to see me eat, Molly. Expect me for supper. <laughs> Why, the fathers of some of you built the eatery. <laughs> and now you're just sticking a knife in its back by helping to build a rail. <laughs> Ain't you got no respect for yourself? <laughs> Why don't you join up with us, Sam? <laughs> hey, is good. Me work for a railroad? I'd rather be dead. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, boys. I better get to the train. We will be working on the railroad. Creeper. Mr. Weaver. Anybody home? Yes. Well, can I come down? Yes. Hello, Molly. Hello. How have you been? Oh, fine. Well, how... How are you getting along with the canalers? Just like I always did. They like me and I like them. What do you mean? They ain't insulting you? Me? Yeah. Nobody ever insulted me. Leastways, hardly nobody. I guess I did feel a little mean at the fair when you ran away. I didn't run away. I had to go see about my farm. I don't want to hear about the farm. Gosh, Molly, I wish you could just see it. It's got the best soil You didn't I... come here to talk about that. No, I didn't, but now that I'm seeing you again, I can't help talking about it. It's all I thought of ever since I've been on it, just how fine it'd be if you was up there. I'll never be there. Even if you could come for the winter, Molly, if you still like the canal, you can come back when it opens up. I couldn't go with a man I didn't respect. I ain't done anything. You I... run away. That's what hurt me so. Not that you was leaving the canal. I could have gotten used to that in time. But in front of everybody, you run away. When everybody knew how I felt about you. Hey. Somebody just told Clor you're in town. He's looking for you. That's all right. I wanted him to know. You're going to meet him? Fortune said folks were sneering at you because what I done. I come back to fight him. You want to fight him? I don't want to, but I don't want you held up to scorn either. Oh, maybe it'd be just as well if you didn't fight him. It'd be better. Dan, I don't want you to fight him. Dan! Uh, how's that, Mr. Weaver? Hi, hi. Ha uh -huh. ha. Floor, this is going to be a fair fight. The first man that fights foul, I'm going to bring him with him. Here comes Dan O'Hara! Don't go down there, Dan. Please. That's what I come for, to meet Clore. I don't want you to get hurt. I guess I can take care of myself, all right. But not with Clore. He's been fighting all his life. Nobody's ever licked him. It ain't a match. I ain't no weakling, either. I cleared five acres of woodland all by myself in one month, and I planted it, too. Gosh, Molly, the country's beautiful in the fall. There, it smells so sweet. Oh, but Clore's terrible when he's mad. I'm getting me some apple trees, too. Dan, maybe you'll be killed. I got the south field all sown with red bush clover and a cover crop of oats. Oh, don't fight, Dan. Please don't. I bet when I get finished, there won't be a farm in this part of the state can hold a candle to mine. Stand back there now. Give him room. Get back. Make it square. Oh, and nobody lays a hand on Daniel Harrell. It's going to be a fair fight. I guess you're looking for me. I'm Dan O'Hara. That's right. You ready? Let her come. Come on, Molly. 
You ought to stay around here. Oh, Lucy, I begged you not to fight. All aboard! Hey! Hey! Mr. Clore's fighting down at Harris in front of Hennessy's hotel. Oh, oh, the way down at Harris! Get up there! Come on! Let's go! You sit right there, Mom. I'll leave you five for three on Clover. That's agreeable. I'll take six dollars for that. Mm. He didn't lose any teeth, did he? Can you see what's happening? There is nip and tuck. Stands on his feet. Yes. me to lick me. That's all I got to say. I'm astonished. I'm astounded. You licked him. Will you come back with me now, Molly? Whipped claw. The farm is over. Oh, you don't want to go back to the farm now, Dan. Don't you realize? You whipped claw. You're the new champion, like my pa used to be, like claw was. Every man on the canal will be talking about you. You'll be famous, Dan. You can't give up the canal now. I don't care anything about the canal. You ought to know that. I told you often enough. I don't care anything about being the bully or the new champion. I came down here to fight Clore, hoping you'd come back with me. Now I can see you wouldn't have sense enough to see how fine my farm is. So I don't want you to come now. Goodbye. Get out now. Oh, oh. Molly. Is this your old farm? Yeah. All oh, mine. Well, come on. Where's your kitchen? Oh, Molly. <laughs> 